Hi, welcome back to Anatomy Classes. This is Dr. Rajita. We shall continue with the development of gastrointestinal tract. Uh, in previous sessions, we saw the development of uh, caudal part of foregut, uh, midgut rotation. And today's session, we are going to learn about uh, hindgut. So hindgut, it is the, that part of uh, gut which is present within the tail fold of embryo. So we know that now the absorbed part of the yolk sac which is present within the embryo, it is uh, absorbed because of this head fold, tail fold and two lateral folds. And the posterior part of the absorbed part of the yolk sac is called as hindgut. And hindgut communicates with the midgut at posterior intestinal portal. And hindgut, there is a diverticulum which arises ventrally in the hindgut which, which runs along in the umbilical cord. This diverticulum is called as allantois. So allantois arises from the ventral side of the hindgut dividing the hindgut into pre-allantoic part and post-allantoic part. Pre-allantoic part, it forms the rest of the transverse colon that is uh, uh, lateral one third of the transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon and part of the rectum. And the lower post-allantoic part, it gets dilated to form a cloaca which is lined by endoderm. So you can say it as endodermal cloaca. And endodermal cloaca, it is further limited below by a membrane which is called as cloacal membrane. So the endoderm approximates with the ectoderm of the proctidium to form the cloacal membrane. So if you see the cloacal membrane, it is a bilaminar structure which has got the ectoderm and endoderm. There is no intervening mesoderm. And cloacal membrane initially it extends on the ventral side of the cloaca and it is limited on the either side by the elevations formed by the genital folds, primitive genital folds and here is the cloacal membrane. And later posterior to the dorsal part of the cloaca there is primitive streak, here is the primitive streak and here is the notochord and the primitive streak starts growing and the mesodermal cells of the primitive streak uh, migrate from the dorsal to the ventral side along the genital folds and settle in the infra umbilical region of the anterior abdominal wall forming the most of the anterior abdominal wall below the umbilicus. And uh, let's see the uh, cloaca further divides into what? So if you see the cloaca, it has got the allantois and the clo cloaca, there is a groove which grows down which is called as urorectal septum. This urorectal septum grows down and comes in contact with the lower part till the cloacal membrane. Before reaching down, the communication below here. So because of this septum, it divides the anterior part as the primitive urogenital sinus and posterior part is called as rectum, primitive rectum. And the communication between the urogenital sinus and primitive rectum is called as cloacal duct. Hindgut is suspended in the dorsal mesentery uh, which is a primitive dorsal mesentery containing the inferior mesenteric vessels supplying the hindgut. And uh, the hindgut we know it is divided into pre-allantoic and post-allantoic parts and pre-allantoic is a narrow tube like structure and post-allantoic parts gets dilated to form the cloaca. Further the septum which arises between the allantois and the cloaca, the septum grows down which is called as urorectal septum. Because of this urorectal septum, the anterior part is called as urogenital sinus and posterior part is called as the primitive rectum. And there is a temp temporary communication between this urorectal, urogenital sinus and the primitive rectum which is called as cloacal duct. And here the urorectal septum further grows down, it grows down and reaches up till the cloacal membrane. So because of the fusion of the urorectal septum with the cloacal membrane, it divides the cloacal membrane into an anterior part which is called as urogenital membrane and the posterior part is called as anal membrane. 
further the anal membrane gets deepened to form the anal pit which is surrounded uh, by the proctidium and this anal pit further grows because of the surrounding mesenchymal cells proliferate growing and making into a deeper pit which is called as part of anal canal later this anal membrane ruptures to form the anal canal where the primitive rectum communicates with the anal canal so if you see this urorectal septum in coronal section it is formed by the three components a vertical band and two lateral folds so the vertical band which grows vertically downwards is called as tornix fold and two lateral folds are called as rathkis folds so the vertical fold comes down and two lateral folds join together so initially the uh, they leave, leave a gap which is called as cloacal duct and later the cloacal duct disappears completely by fusion of all these three folds so rathkis folds are actually along arises from the lateral wall of the cloaca so this lateral wall of the cloaca the rathkis fold contains two components which are called as mesonephric duct and paramesonephric duct so the lateral ones are the mesonephric duct and medials are the paramesonephric duct mesonephric duct uh, is called as the wolfian duct and paramesonephrin duct uh, is called as mullerian duct and uh, this here is the transverse section to show the components present within the urorectal septum and now we can see the anterior part is called as urogenital sinus and posterior is called as the primitive rectum and between the septum is the urorectal septum the temporary communication here is the cloacal duct and the cloacal duct completely disappears here after fusing the urorectal septum down till the cloacal membrane so that is about the urorectal septum and uh, development of the rectum and the anal canal so if you see the interior of the rectum it has got valves which are called as hostens valves so till the third hosten valve the mucous membrane is derived from the preallantoic part of the hindgut and below the third valve below the third hostens valve the mucous membrane is derived from the endodermal cloaca and next uh, about the anal canal the anal canal interiorly has got a line which is called as pectinate line so above to the pectinate line uh, the anal canal is derived from the primitive rectum that is primitive cloaca and below the pectinate line uh, the anal canal is derived from the proctidium that is ectodermal proctidium so above the pectinate line the mucous membrane is endodermal in origin and below the pectinate line the mucous membrane is ectodermal in origin which is derived from the proctidium that is from the surface ectoderm and uh, the musculature the musculature of these um, uh, tubes are from the surrounding splanchnopleuric mesoderm and peritoneum is also from the surrounding splanchnopleuric mesoderm so this is about the development of hindgut and uh, we shall uh, see the applied aspect of development of hindgut so doing with the applied anatomy of uh, development of hindgut the first study here is the imperforate anus uh, which is also known as anorectal malformation and it occurs because of three reasons the first reason is uh, failure of the rupture of uh, anal membrane and uh, which separates the anal canal with the primitive rectum and a non development of ectodermal proctidium so the proctidium fails to develop Uh, forming the lower part of the anal canal or it can be due to atrophy or atresia of the lower part of uh, rectum so these are the reasons of for imperforate anus so imperforate anus may also occur due to secondary reasons we shall see now the secondary reasons are uh, the recto urethral or recto vaginal fistula in males uh, the urinary bladder and the urethra are related in front of the rectum so here is the rectum uh, rectum uh, this is the rectum and here is the urethra 
and most commonly it occurs through the prostatic part of the urethra so communicates with the primitive devel uh, developed rectum and here there is imperforate anal canal and in females between the urinary bladder and the rectum we see the development of paramesonephric ducts or mullerian ducts they grow to form the uterus and uh, vaginal canal so because of intervening vagina in between the rectum and the urinary bladder so recto vaginal fistula may result so this also uh, is one of the anomalies associated with the imperforate anus hirschsprung disease hirschsprung disease is uh, a congenital malformation of uh, absence of submucosal plexus which are called as meesner's plexus and um, myentric plexus which are present within the muscular wall of the git so in the lower part of the git uh, because of the failure of migration of neural crust cells to this area so submucosal plexus that is a meesner's plexus and myentric plexus fails to uh, appear so because of the absence of these uh, plexus uh, the peristaltic movements lose their reflex causing a mega colon and it happens in 1 in 5000 births i hope you all got to know about the development of hind gut uh, subscribe like share and press the bell button for further notifications bye